Anataya Silver Lady. The underbody I did previously in a vise with some UTC 140 thread. Just wanted to make sure it was nice and smooth since this is a tensile body fly. And uh, using some well waxed gossamer thread and just working it down to the tip tag tie in point. And uh, just make sure it's somewhat even wraps. You just want to make sure you don't have any lumps and bumps for that tensile body to lay on. Um, you don't have to be meticulous about it, but just make it look somewhat nice. And then once uh, you get your thread down to the tie in point, you're going to take some fine oval silver tinsel and tie that in. Make sure you do use good edge to edge wraps once you get down to the tag tie in point. You uh, want to make sure that's as smooth as possible for your floss and your tinsel. So once you get your tinsel tied in, put your thread and catch, and then put three to four wraps of tinsel down, depending on your size. Take your time, make it look good. Tie it off, and uh, sometimes I find it helps just to stick it up and the gap between the hook eye and the shank and tie it off that way. And trim it out once you got it tied in and nice and even wraps all the way up. And the next step is to tie in a piece of red floss. This is some JEC silk. Um, this is a pretty heavy duty hook so I didn't worry about splitting it down since I do need some bulk to help create a taper. And as you wrap it up, if you just overlap it a slight amount, it'll uh, help to build a taper. And obviously the more you overlap it, the more taper you build into it. So just keep an eye on how much overlap you're doing and adjust as needed to you know, make that a, a smooth transition. And once you get enough on there, tie it off. And again, sticking it up in the hook eye can help too if uh, need be. And trim it out and then I like to even up that section so it's nice and smooth and so the tail doesn't have to have a big jump to go over and the tail on this fly is peacock sword fibers um, these are not the funnest things to work with so take a slip from a right and a left um, match pair of uh, sword um, tail feathers and uh, I leave the stems on for the tail just because I find it easier and just put a nice loose wrap over it and then adjust um, them so that they're sitting on top of the shank and in line with everything. You might need to tweak them a little bit just because they don't like to cooperate at all. Just take it slow and they'll eventually work for you. Now trim out the waist and finish tying that down and then prepare a uh, white ostrich churl and tie that in. And slowly wind that up and nice good edge to edge wraps you want that to sit really close to each other gives you a good density that way and tie it off and trim it out and then you're just gonna moisten your fingertip with some saliva and, and brush all those fibers back it gives a nice flowing look and helps to make it all sit nice and pretty with each other And then you're going to select a piece of large silver tinsel. This is some really nice vintage stuff I have. It's pretty wide. And then you're just going to cut a taper into it so that way as you wind it up, it, it starts out relatively narrow at the butt of the fly and then it builds up to full size. It should only be, you know, a couple wraps worth that it's tapered. This part's not a whole lot of fun. You just got to take your time and slowly wind that tinsel up. And just make sure it's nice and tight and side by side wraps. Don't want any overlap. What can really help here is just making sure that your underbody thread has a uh, lot of wax on it so that way the tinsel sticks to it and that'll just help to make sure it doesn't shift around on you. And just take your time and work your way all the way up. No easy way to do this, just awkward and if you lose it and it springs out on you, just gotta start all over again. 
And once you get up to the hook eye, what I do is I take a couple good wraps and then I pull the tinsel tight and then I put a couple more good wraps and then I trim it out. And then I leave a little tiny bit of length on the tinsel so that way I can just fold it over with my fingertip against the hook shank and tie it down good and tight. The wing on this fly is uh, listed as gray, so I just use some mallard uh, wing feathers that I have. Strip off the fluff and measure it out so that way it's sitting where you want it to, and you pretty much just want the tips to be out a little bit past the, the bend of the hook. And then I taper the underside of the feathers by just cutting, a, cutting it, and as you're cutting it, you just draw the scissors back while you're doing it, and that helps to feather it a little bit and makes it just look better for some reason. And then uh, do a little bit of a Z bend by just uh, pressing your fingers into the stems and creating a little bit of a Z shape so that way you can get up and over the tinsel and it can sit nice and low that way. Once you get it in place just tie it down and make sure those stems are side by side you don't want them overlapped at all it won't work if you don't have them right side by side. So good tight wraps and and then check your position once you think you're on there good enough. And if it's sitting right, then trim out the stems. And I taper them a little bit, and I cut them, you know, cut one a little longer than the other, so that way it creates a little taper to the head. And then once you get them tied in good, uh, I switch over to some uh, black gossamer here. Um, it does the photo of in favorite flies does show it as red, but I didn't have any, and you're not really gonna see a whole anyway, so I just use black. Now uh, select a couple jungle cock feathers and I pick them from the sides of the cape so they have a little bit more natural curvature and they follow the wing better that way. And then you're just going to measure them out and then uh, trim out the um, barbs at the tie-in point. You don't want to strip them. It gives the thread a little bit more to hold on to and a little more bite. So trim those out and put one on. Um, you can do them at the same time. I just like to do them one at a time. They always seem to sit better for me that way and it's just less hassle. So, and if you do have um, less curvature in one of them, you can just kind of bend the stem just slowly, you know, at the tie-in point and create the curve that, that you need in order to match the wing shape. And then just put it on the same way and check that they're the same length. And once you have them tied in and they're the same length, you do any little touch-ups that you need to do and then Go ahead and trim the stems out. The fly has a quote unquote topping that is uh, some peacock sword fibers as well. So, again, cut out your slips from a match pair of sword feathers. And then I put them back to back and then I trim off the stems after I put them back to back. And then I moisten the butts with a little bit of saliva. It just seems to help me tie them in better. And I put those right on top and then just slowly tie them on. You just don't want to tweak them too much. And make sure you have a good hold on them right at the tying point. So that way, you know, any of the shifting happens with the butts, not with the actual fibers. And select and prepare a brown hackle. This is just a hen hackle. You could use schlappen if you want to. Um, you're going to need to double it, and doubling really isn't all that hard. It just You just have to do it a few times to get the hang of it. And Essentially, all you're doing is just folding the, the barbs down you know, towards each other, going uh, away from the stem. Some people like to use the hackle pliers to hold the, the stem. I just hold it with my fingers because it's a little more awkward for me to do it with hackle pliers. And once you have it doubled, tie it in. And trim out the waist. As you can see, it's a lot easier just to double it beforehand, so you can just easily wrap it right on there. And tie the stem down and give it a little tug just to make sure it's nice and tight. And trim it out of there. Any little touch ups you need to do, go ahead. And then you're just going to want to prepare another hurl for the head and you're going to want to prepare it so that way it sticks out over the front of the fly and then when you so when you start to wrap it you want the flue to be sticking forward away from the fly 
then I wrap all the way back to the to the tie-in point of the um, or the tie-off point of the hackle, and putting a half hitch right there will help just to hold the thread, so you don't have to worry about it coming undone and going underneath that hurl. And then just put good edge-to-edge -edge wraps down with your hurl. Work your way towards the tie-off point. And tie it off. A couple wraps is all you need. And then do a double half hitch. You want to make sure that that sits just in front of the wing tie-off uh, tie point and the hackle tie-off point and just behind that hurl. You don't want it to go back or forward either way, um, otherwise it'll squish down your, your hackle or your wing or you'll trap down too many barbs from your, your hurl. So just take your time and make sure it sits right. Once you get it tied off, trim out your waist of your hurl and your thread. Do any touch-ups you need to do. And then you're going to moisten your finger with a little saliva and um, brush that hurl back towards the head to make it sit nice. And then you'll just take a mascara brush or an inner dentine brush and brush that out once it's dried. And that's all you need to do.